All right, so we have Bootstrap installed. We have our static files working. Now we're ready to discuss how templates work and the templating system within Django. It's very powerful. It allows us to do a whole lot of stuff without doing a whole lot of other stuff, uh, which is cool. So it saves us a lot of time, energy, and effort. Those are the things that I like saving personally. I'm sure you do too. Okay, so what templates do is they are rendered in the view. So let's take a look at this view, our homepage view. We have certain context variables, which is all this stuff, if you remember back. And then we have this function here that renders the request with the template and the context that is involved with that template. Now templates have something called inheritance. So what that means is we can use other templates within these templates and we can inherit from templates within these templates. So like in our base.html, for example, if we go in here and we scroll down to this static nav bar, don't worry if you don't know exactly what the static nav bar is doing or means exactly yet, but at some point we will. So let's go ahead and grab this static nav bar. I'm going to cut it completely out. So from nav to nav and notice that little, little bitsy line there is showing you uh, where it actually ends and closes, which is cool. So I'm going to cut out this static nav bar I'm going to save this base.html. Inside of the template folder, I'm going to make a new file here and I'm going to save it as navbar.html. Right, and make sure that it's in the templates folder. And I'm going to paste in that static navbar. So now we've got that in there. And inside of base.html, now I'm going to use the curly brackets, the percent sign, and we'll do include navbar.html and curly brackets. All right, percent curly brackets. There we go, so we save that. Go back into our homepage, refresh. Ah, nothing changed. Perfect, so if I go into navbar and say project name, let's call it MVP landing, MVP landing. Save that, refresh. Nah, MVP landing is now there and working. That is an include tag. So let me go back into base. This is an include tag, where before we saw the static tag. And notice we didn't have to load the include tag like we had to load the static tag because this is a built-in default functionality to the Django templating system. And how is it including it? That inclusion happens when we render it. So when it's being rendered, it goes through the base.html, it reads all this stuff, looks for things like this, and includes it. Now, there is another tag called a verbatim that would allow you, so if we do verbatim here, that would allow you to render the, whatever the context or the template tag itself is saying, so in verbatim. So in, in the case of you have code or something that you wanna display that has these curly brackets and this is basically the same format, you would use verbatim and then you'd wanna end verbatim. All right, so we go back in here, we refresh, that nav bar's gone now and it's showing include nav bar. Just a little template tag that's kind of cool, but we don't want that. There's also a comment one. So if we use the hashtag or the pound, we have we can actually comment in the code that will not be rendered either. So if we got rid of that, it would show up right there. Okay, cool. So that's include, that's verbatim. Those two things are, and comments, those are pretty, pretty useful. Uh, but the next one that is actually very useful is using blocks. So blocks, what they do is allow us to replace things based off of inheritance. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this Jumbotron right here, or this marketing message, this component, this main part right here. I'm going to cut this out, save the base.html, go into my home.html, and above all of my other stuff, I'm just going to paste that in. All right, so now I've got that Jumbotron in there and this base.html. So now what I can use is this block tag. So block, and I'm gonna call this content. And then I need, whenever I open a block, I have to end a block. Just like verbatim, whenever you open verbatim, you have to end verbatim. It's definitely different from include because include would assume that that page ends at some point where block doesn't necessarily know if it ends or not. So we have to tell it that it ends just like HTML, div, div. All right, so now that we've got this block content, we can actually use this 
in our inheritance. So in our home.html, whatever we want inside that block, we can put it in here. So let's first off just put the form and all the original stuff in there. And I'll say block content. And then I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and say block content as well, or in block. So whatever you open, you must close. Okay, so block content in block. Now we see that we've had this going. So let's uh, change our view to being home.html instead of base. So it's going back to home.html. And if we refresh in here, huh, nothing changes. Notice the block content stuff is not showing up. And that's because it is rendering it, but it's not doing anything, so it doesn't matter. So to actually do inheritance, we would say that it extends base.html. So this is saying that it extends, it's, it's inheriting from base.html. So whatever's in base.html, take that stuff and bring it and use it with home.html. What it does, well, we don't know yet, but we'll see what that does in just a second. So I go ahead and refresh in here. Uh-oh, what happened? Okay, so we now have the nav bar in here. This is formatted a little differently. It's no longer on the side. Uh, we do have some extraneous stuff, uh, which I'll worry about in a moment, but we are now seeing that this actually is coming through and it's looking a little different. But notice this is not showing up, right? So it's not inside this block and therefore it will not show up. So if we go back into the base and we add a new block in here, let's just say block jumbotron and we say in block we now have this new block that we can use so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna bring it in here and I'm gonna paste it around the jumbotron so block at top in block all that and tab this stuff in so we can just see it a little bit better save it and now if I go back in here hopefully we know what happens if I refresh that jumbotron comes back if I change the block name to Jumbotron 2, it goes away. And this is template inheritance. It's actually very, very powerful because that means that we can really bring this base.html down to its bare bones. And that's something we'll do here in just a moment. But we can also do all sorts of things otherwise. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to change the title tag, which the title tag is what's coming up here. And we wanted to change it to, let's say, MVP landing. But we also wanted to have something in front of it. So we could say block, let's say title head, or actually head underscore title, head underscore title. And then we will in block right next to that. So in block. Cool. So now I've got this block underscore title. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of space there. Refresh in here, MVP landing's coming through. Now, if I go, want to go ahead and grab this, go on my homepage, I can put it below extends. Extends has to be at the very top. Paste it in here, and I can say welcome. Put this slash here. Refresh. Now it's saying welcome on my homepage. And that's how you can use it. You can use it for all sorts of things. It's really, really cool. Um, so that's, that's one thing that we have. There's another thing that we can do as well is we can cut this out of block, con block Jumbotron and we can put it inside the base.html. Let's put it in here and refresh in here. Notice it's still showing up, it's still showing up. But what if I said, hi, it goes away. So we can also do block.super. So this is getting, uh, this is a template context variable now where this is a block. So it's a little bit different. Uh, this is a template tag, context variable. Refresh. And now using block super, it's still getting whatever's in that super area. And it's also adding something to that. Of course, you could do that with block head as well. So let's just leave in um, hello, just for example's sake. Uh, and then we can do this as well in here and say block.super. So then in our base, we would change this to being inside of that block. And that way, it still renders the same way, but then we can completely change that entire tag if we want. And block.super, we could just think of it as the name of the site. So MVP landing in this case. Cool, so that is some template inheritance stuff. 
Um, there is a lot more to it than just this. Uh, but what I want to do is actually change and clean up our base even more. I'm going to remove all of our like uh, HTML and CSS stuff, excuse me, all of our CSS stuff, and maybe even the entire head document. But what I'll just do is get rid of the CSS. And then in my templates, I'm going to make a new file here and call it head underscore CSS.html. Paste this in. And now in base, again, I'll do this include, and I'll say head underscore CSS.html. And now we've got a new a cleaner, even cleaner base.html. And then JavaScript, notice those curly brackets down here. Remember we were saying, what are these coming from? Well, I see them down here now, so I can get rid of those. And that might've just been an error of some kind that happened when we were typing. So obviously be careful. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and make a new file in here. Oops, not a, not, I don't wanna rename the template file folder. That was a mistake. New file in here, call it JavaScript html paste this in here save that go back into base and we'll do include javascript html cool so uh oops we got a static error so this is happening here so in this is something is good to see actually template static syntax error excuse me invalid block tag static why did this happen so think back to when we first added a static file we added something else, this template loader. So you would want to do that same thing in each file that uses whatever it is that we're talking about. So in this case, it's head.css, and then also we're going to put it in javascript.html. Okay, so now we refresh, and now it works again. Cool. And it works just as intended. All right, so this is not all we can do as far as our templates, but this is a very comprehensive look at it depending on how you actually want to do things for this entire uh, project, right? So you could you could also have a block inside of a block, or you could try it. So let's let's put a block inside a block jumbotron, and instead of we'll say block jumbotron content, and let's see let's see what this does. So end block. So now got this block jumbotron content. Let's cut this content out. And then at home.html, instead of block jumbotron, we'll say block jumbotron content. And we'll paste this in. Refresh. Still showing up. So let's change the navbar example and say hello there. Example. Refresh. Still showing up. So you can still do that. Um, and of course, if you changed the block jumbotron, The high, ah, uh, it goes away. Unless, then it works. Okay, cool. So we've got, we can do blocks inside of blocks and then we can use block super a lot. Uh, so those are, those are pretty, pretty useful tools that you can have with templates themselves. And you can inherit, templates can inherit from other things. So, uh, for example, if we wanted to use inheritance of this, we could say um, in our forms.html, we could have this inherit from home.html. Not sure why you would do inheritance of inheritance. In many cases, you probably wouldn't, but in the case that you might need to, that's how you would do it. Okay, so um, if you have any questions on using the templates, blocks, and inheritance, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.